Hi, you can heal family. Good morning. We are reading today the Old Testament, 2 Samuel, chapter 23. We're in the Open Bible, New Living Translation. Now, this starts off interesting because it says these are the last words of David. Is David going to die? Here, and then there, as I'm skimming over this, there's a lot of names here that I'm going to have to pronunciate, so forgive me in advance, all right? Here we go. 2 Samuel chapter 23. These are the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, speaks David, the man to whom God gave such wonderful success. David, the man anointed by the God of Jacob. David, the sweetest psalmist, and psalmist of Israel. The Spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His words are upon my tongue. The God of Israel spoke. The rock of Israel said to me, The person who rules righteously, who rules in the fear of God, he is like the light of the morning, like the sunrise bursting forth in a cloudless sky, like the refreshing rains that bring tender grass from the earth. It is my family God has chosen. He has made an everlasting covenant with me. His agreement is eternal, final, and sealed. He will constantly look after my safety and success. But the godless are like the thorns to be thrown away, for they tear the hand that touches them. One must be armed to chop them down. They will be utterly consumed with fire. Let me take a minute to get some water. Deeds of David's Mightiest Men. Verse 8. These are the names of David's mightiest men. The first was Joshabim, the Hakamite, who was commander of the three, the three greatest warriors among David's men. He once used his spear to kill 800 enemy warriors in a single battle. Next in rank among the three was Eleazar, son of Jediah, a descendant of Ahoa. Once Eleazar and David stood together against the Philistines when the entire Israelite army had fled. He killed Philistines until his hand was too tired to lift the sword, and the Lord gave him a great victory that day. The rest of the army did not return until it was time to collect the plunder. Next in rank was Shema, son of Ag Ag Agi from Harar. One time the Philistines gathered at Lehi and attacked the Israelites in a field full of lentils. The Israelite army fled, but Shema held his ground in the middle of the field and beat back the Philistines. So the Lord brought about a great victory. This is interesting. David's kind of bragging about his commanders, right? That have done a good job for him, and he's kind of, you know, setting them apart a little bit because they did what they were called to do. Is, you know, someone might be listening to this and are wondering, you know, why aren't I getting any recognition at work? Or why isn't anyone noticing me? You know, let me ask you. Let me step on toes. You know, are you giving 100%? Are you doing everything that you're asked of and more and going beyond? Maybe that's the lesson as I'm listening to that, those verses. It goes on to say in verse 13, Once during harvest time, when David was at the cave of Adullam, the Philistine army was camped in a valley of Rephraim. The three who were among the thirty, an elite group among David's fighting men, went down to meet him there. David was staying in the stronghold at the time, and a Philistine detachment had occupied the town of Bethlehem. David remarked longingly to his men, Oh, how I would love some of that good water from the well in Bethlehem, the one by the gate. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew some water from the well, and brought it back to David. Now see, these are the type of people, if you're an employer or have people under you, these are the type of people you want. David, <laughs> David needed some water and they broke through the Philistine lines to get it. But then it says he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out before the Lord. The Lord forbid that I should drink this, he exclaimed. This water is as precious as the blood of these men who risked their lives to bring it to me. Wow. So David did not drink it. This is an example of the exploits of the three. Wow. So it tells me again, you know, it now if you 
if you are in management or a supervisor, you know, notice the things that the people do for you and recognize what they have to go through to make you look better, right? Hopefully, that, that's the kind of people you have under you. It says here in verse 18, Abishai, son of Zeruiah, the brother of Joab, was a leader of the 30. He once used his spear to kill 300 enemy warriors in a single battle. It was by such feats that he became as famous as the three. Abishai was the most famous of the 30 and was their commander, though he was not one of the three. Hmm. There was also Benaiah, son of Jehoda, a valiant warrior from Gabziel. He did many heroic deeds, which included killing two of Moab's mightiest warriors. Another time, he chased the lion down into a pit. Then, despite the snow and slippery ground, he caught the lion and killed it. Another time, armed only with a club, he killed a great Egyptian warrior who was armed with a spear. Benaniah wrenched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with it. These are some of the deeds that made Benaniah almost as famous as the three. He was more honored than the other members of the 30, though he was not one of the three. And David made him commander of his bodyguard. So that's interesting too. He wasn't one of the three, but he was still put in a good position and he still performed well. He might not have been at the top of the class, but he still did his part. So, you know, I'm, as I'm reading this, I, I'm trusting that the spirit is, is making this connection to real life. For some of you. I, I just have to trust God with that. Now verse 24 starts the names. It says other members of the 30 included Asahel, Joab's brother, Elhanan, son of Dodo from Bethlehem, Shemar from Harad, Elika from Harad, Helez from Pelon, Ira, son of Akesh from Tekoa, Abizir from Anathoth, Sibikai from Husha, Salman from Ehoa, Maharai from Netapha, Haled, son of Bana from Netapha, Aithai, son of Levi from Gibeah, from the tribe of Benjamin, Benaniah from Pirathon, Hurai from Nahal Gash, Abai Alban, the Arabathite, Asmapheth from Bahurim, Elahaba from Shalvan, the sons of Jashen, Jonathan, son of Shagi from Harar, Ahaam, son of Sharar from Harar, El Felet, son of Ahasthai from Makkah, Eliam, son of Ahithophel from Gelo, Hezro from Carmel, and Perai from Arba, Igal, son of Nathan from Zoba, Benai from Gaza. From Gad, Zileth from Amon, Naharai from Zerah, Jobar's armor bearer, Arah from Jatir, Gareb from Jatir, Uriah the Hittite. These were 37 in all. So you had the three that stood out, and then the other two that were mentioned, and then all these men. So think about all the people in the army. These 30 people were called out, and their names made it in the Bible. So, hats off to them. They must have put in the work. <laughs> so, put in the work. It seems like a lot of these lessons today that I'm hearing are about working hard and, you know, doing what's asked of you, even if you aren't recognized. And there were more than 30 people, you know, in David's army over the time. But these, these names made it in the Bible. Yes, they did. So, there you have it. And, um, Notice Uriah at the end, the Hittite, and that was the story with Bathsheba. So, there we go. We did it. We are going to be reading um, chapter 24 tomorrow. And I think that, yeah, that would be the end of um, 2 Samuel. And there's also a little breakout article about the altars in the Bible. So, we'll, we'll read the chapter tomorrow. 24, and then we'll read also this little article about altars. So I hope you have a beautiful day. 
you're a beautiful person. God created you in his image. You know, <laughs> you got all you need. You got you got Jesus living on the inside of you. So have a beautiful day. And we'll be back tomorrow with our last chapter of Second Samuel.